Hey guys, this is Veronica with Oh Happy Plants. Um, once again, a little reminder, I'm sure you've heard this multiple times, um, members.ohhappyplants.com is where all of these videos are going to be posted in perpetuity. And um, that's where I put a bunch of Q and A's and tutorial videos and um, like life cycle based mite treatment plans and like other pest uh, treatment plans and stuff like that. Um, life cycle based treatment is really important. You can't treat these things once and think you're done. Um, just an aside. Anyway, we have questions. So um, number one here is plants have a humidifier, but they're crisping on the edges. How do I make them happier? Um, usually what I see is people set their plants up and baby them and give them a humidifier and do all of these like conniptions for their plants. And they forget that they're not watering them enough. And so then they crisp at the edges and they're like, what the heck? Why is my plant crispy? It has a humidifier. Um, air humidity is not going to replace proper moisture at the roots because that's where they take the water and they take it up into the plant itself. So if you're seeing crispy tips, if you're seeing, um, I'll get to something else in a minute. <laughs> One thing at a time. If you're seeing crispy tips, um, it can be a couple of things. Usually it means you're not watering enough. So you just need to bump that up just a little bit. Sometimes, especially in the case of things like um, Chinese evergreen aglaonema, um, if you are walking past a plant and brushing against it a lot, sometimes that can make the edge die and um, like the tip of the leaf or the side of the leaf die or tear. And so sometimes that is going to be the reason that you see um, damage on the leaf edges or browning on the leaf edge is because somebody's like brushing past it a million times a day. So that's something that I saw a lot in like office buildings and lobbies where a plant had like leaves sticking out into the walkway and people just don't care. They think they're fake. So they just walk past them and they don't even notice. And, um, and that like over and over like if it happens a hundred times in a day, that will lead to some kind of damage on the leaf. So you wanna take a look at where your plants are. But if it's not that, if it's just a crispy tip, then it probably means that you're letting the plant go a little bit too dry before you water. And so once again, if you're watering on a schedule, you need to have have yourself checking your plants on a schedule because we're human and we need reminders. And um, we live based on a calendar, but these plants back here, they have no idea what the hell a calendar is and they don't even care. So what they want is they want you to notice when they need water because we have decided to play God and bring them into our houses. Like plants outside, they don't have a roof. So they get rain whenever they get rain and they adapt to drought and they have like certain signs that happen when they're going through a drought and um, they might get crispy tips in nature because the, the rain clouds didn't come. So um, if you are the rain cloud, and if you want those crispy tips to be gone, then you need to take your little rain cloud self over to the sink with your watering can. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's the number one thing, is just people are not watering enough. Um, so many people have overwatered a plant. They love it too much. They think they need to water it every day. That's their first plant. And then they get so scared of overwatering. And then they go onto the internet and they tell every single person they can find that you're overwatering your plant. You need to stop it. And I'm just like, okay, that's wilt that's wilt, that's drought. This is, you know, so many plants have been underwatered because everyone thinks that overwatering is the number one issue. And, um, and it's not. Um, lack of light is usually a big issue. Overwatering can be an issue. It's not any crazier than any other problem that we see with plants. So um, basically we just need to pay attention to what they need. Not knowing what your plant needs and giving it the wrong thing is the number one issue. And so that's what we wanna correct. Um, anyway, back to the question once again, if your plants have a humidifier and they're still crisping, um, let me know if you want to go over to that member community. It's um, members.ohappyplants.com. Um, go over there and post a picture of your plant or just say like what type of plant it is because it really depends on the type of plant. Some plants do want a little bit higher humidity and respond well to that. Usually what I've found is plants that are exhibiting those sorts of issues just haven't been watered well enough or deeply enough or often enough. They're just getting too dry too frequently and then they're showing symptoms. Um, one other thing though, let me show you. Gotta move some things. Let me just grab this guy. 
leaf time. Okay, this right here. This is an Alocasia zebrina. That type of browning is indicative of a spider mite infestation. Um, Alocasias come in with spider mites, like all of them. So don't even play with those. Um, treat them and treat them again and treat them again and treat them every, like maybe twice a week for a month um, before you mix them with your plants. Um, not joking about that one. <laughs> spider mites are assholes. And if you want a total uh, pest control video that gives like several options for treating spider mites as well as why you need to treat so frequently, um, go ahead over again to that member community and just go to the tutorial section. You can use the search bar at the top and search for spider mites and it'll pull up those. Um, spider mites are stupid little vampires and I hate them. And so, um, so if you're seeing browning, that's that sort of browning, it's not a crispy dry tip. It's a flexible kind of brown tip. That is usually a mite infestation. It can be some sort of like bacterial or fungal infection sometimes. Usually that will show up as, um, I'm trying to find if I have any, like a, a kind of a browning with a yellow halo or the opposite, a yellowing with some kind of like reddish halo that kind of creeps in or forms like a spot in the middle of the leaf. Usually the, the brown edge coming up from the bottom of the leaf is usually a mite infestation. Or if you see kind of a yellowing all around the perimeter of the leaf, let me just, so if, if like this whole edge has yellowing, um, look for tiny little specks of dust on the leaf. Um, that might be like a broad mite or a cyclamen mite infestation. And those are mites that do not have webbing. So it just looks like there's kind of like fine dust all over the leaf and it clusters around the leaf veins. So definitely look for those if you're seeing um, any kind of browning. I always look for pests whenever I see any leaf issues just because I've seen so many pests in my day that it's just like they're everywhere so why not look for them when you have a chance. Um, but with those sorts of browning with the dry crispy tips it's most likely going to be just underwatering. So just like increase the frequency of your watering like move watering day up a day. Do it every six days instead of every seven which totally screws with our human schedules or you can just give it a little bit more of a drink. And sometimes with some plants it is okay to leave a little bit of water in the saucer because they're going to use it so fast that they won't even notice that they're sitting in a puddle. Um, that is sacrilege, I understand. Um, this is coming from somebody who had to, like my job was going around every two weeks I went to each location. Um, there were a couple that I could get to more frequently than that, that they were paying for that, but typically it was only every two weeks. So I had to water enough for that plant to last for two weeks, which meant sometimes they get a little water in the, in the saucer, even Hoyas. And people think that Hoyas can't handle that, but they can. You just have to know what you're doing. So once again, just get to know your plants, listen to them. They're talking to you. You just need to learn the language. Um, thanks guys. Have a good night. Bye.